Examples are the function in indeterminate form. What is indeterminate form? Now, if you try to substitute 9 here in every x of the function, that will be 9 minus 9 is equal to 0. And square root of 3, or square root of 9 minus 3, that will be 3 minus 3. And again, all over 0. If the function is 0 over 0, when you substitute the value of c, then that function is indeterminate. Okay, now, so let us solve this one using rational decision. Now, as you observe, here in this example, the denominator is binomial. And since the denominator is binomial, we can multiply it by its conjugate. When we say conjugate, Okay, if square root of x minus 3, its conjugate is square root of x plus 3. So we're going to multiply the function by square root of x plus 3 over square root of x plus 3. Now, that will be x minus 9 times square root of x plus 3 over the denominator will be Square root of x times square root of x, that will be x. Negative 3 times positive 3, that will be negative 9. By the way, this is shortcut, but the principle here is the product of binomial. 1 is negative, 1 is positive, that will be a plus b times a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. That is why... Square root of x times square root of x is x. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. So that's it. So uh, we can cancel out x minus 9 here. What is left is the limit of square root of x plus 3, in which x is approaching 9. So therefore, that will be square root of 9 plus 3 or 3 plus 3, and that is equal to 6. Therefore, the limit of x minus 9 over square root of x minus 3, as x approaches 9, is 6. Let's proceed to number 2. Now, again, if we're going to substitute 0, that will be 0 plus 1. Square root of 1 is 1 minus 1, still 0. Then, as x approaches 0, if this is 0, that will be 0 over 0. Now, again, in this example, we will be multiplying the function by its conjugate. Now, in this case, that will be multiplied to square root of x plus 1 plus 1, okay, over, if... By the way, if negative here, the conjugate is positive. So, square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Then, let us continue. Square root of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1 is x plus 1. Okay? Then, negative 1 and positive 1, so we have minus 1. Over, that will be x. And, sorry. Square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Okay. Now, x plus 1 minus 1 is equal to x over x, then square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Okay. Then we can cancel out x here. So what is left is 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus 1. Okay. Now, still we have the x here. So that will be limit of 1 over square root of x plus 1 plus 1 as x approaches 0. Let us try to Substitute 0 here. So that will be 1 over square root of 
0 plus 1 plus 1. So that will be 1 over square root of 1 plus 1. Or that will be 1 half. Because square root of 1 is 1 plus 1. So that will be 2. So therefore, the limit of square root of x plus 1 minus 1 over x as x approaches 0 is equal to 1 half. Number 3. Now, in this case, try to substitute 1 again, and still, the answer is 0 over 0. So, by rationalization, we are going to multiply it by its conjugate. So, that will be, the conjugate of the denominator is square root of x plus 1 over square root of x plus 1. Again, if we are going to multiply, that will be x squared minus 1. And this one is square root of x plus 1. Over square root of x times square root of x is x. Negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. Now, let us continue the process. Again, we have x squared minus 1. And we have square root of x plus 1. But still, this is factorable by x plus 1 and x minus 1. By the way, x plus 1 times x minus 1 is x squared minus 1. Now, that will be times square root of x plus 1 over x minus 1. Again, we can see common here, which is x minus 1 and x minus 1. What is left is the limit of x plus 1 times square root of x plus 1, sorry, as x approaches 1. Now try to substitute. So we have 1 plus 1 times square root of 1 plus 1. So that will be 2 times 2. Right? Square root of 1 is 1 plus 1. That will be 2. Or that is equal to 4. Therefore, the limit of x squared minus 1 over square root of x minus 1 as x approaches 1 is 4. That is how to evaluate limits using rationalization method.